Jamal Khashoggi. The State Department also says the Saudi government is responsible for executing nonviolent offenders and for torture. President Trump has not punished senior Saudi leaders. Would you? Yes, and I said it at the time. Khashoggi was, in fact, murdered and dismembered, and I believe in the order of the Crown Prince. And I would make it very clear, we were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. There's very little social redeeming value of the, in the present uh, government in Saudi Arabia. And I would also, as pointed out, I would end, end the subsidies that we have, end the sale of material to the Saudis who are going in and murdering children and they're murdering innocent people. And so they have to be held accountable. With respect to the murder of Khashoggi, I raised it at the top of the meeting, making it clear what I thought of it at the time and what I think of it now. And it was exactly, I was straightforward and direct in discussing it. I made my view crystal clear. I said very straightforwardly, for an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights, is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am? We'll once more return to the hollow ground of Yad Vashem to honor six million Jewish lives who were stolen in the genocide and continue, which we must do every, every day, continue to bear witness. To keep alive the truth and honor of the Holocaust, horror of the Holocaust, honor those we lost. I will once more return to the hollow ground of Yad Vashem. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. Today's video, obviously I'm going to be talking about Biden's trip to Saudi Arabia. Those of you who have seen my previous uh, parody video about um, MBS avoiding Biden's call, you should try and see it, it's quite funny. But this video is going to be quite serious. As you can see from the first few clips, Biden is having very very hard time by the West um, absolutely slaughtering him for doing a fist bump with um, MBS and the reason he's getting slaughtered is because also from the first clip you can see that uh, Biden initially did not say very nice things about MBS previously um, he's done a lot of things to anger MBS as well and MBS is the crown prince, and he's going to head head to to be the you know the next king um, if his father dies. And Biden so far has only been dealing with his father, and now he looks like he's forced to deal with MBS because it seems like MBS has all the power now. So Biden obviously has said um, that he's going to make him into a pariah. He's not happy. Um, he's going to stop weapon sales. And he's been saying some really nasty things to MBS and in return MBS has been avoiding Biden's calls and avoiding his requests for a long time. And his trip here to Saudi Arabia has not really helped things, actually made things worse. The fact that he is fist pumping uh, the Saudi prince whilst he is shaking hands with all of the rabbis and Israelis and you can see from the other clip that he's... He's shaking hands with all of the rabbis, Israelis. Then obviously MBS is not very happy. The fact that he gets a fist bump while the Israelis get a handshake. Biden also visited uh, President Mahmoud Abbas from Palestinian, um, the Palestinian leader. And again, like all of the other US leaders, pretty much brushed the Palestinian issue under the carpet. Doesn't want to deal with it, doesn't want to do anything about it. And then he also is insulted the Israelis by saying um, honor the Holocaust or something and he's getting absolutely destroyed on Twitter for saying that so every time he opens his mouth he causes an international incident I mean I'm surprised they let this guy out so another funny thing had happened on his trip so he's going around saying that 
he basically raised the issue of Khashoggi um, to MBS and said he holds him respons responsible and never to do it again, blah, blah, blah. We stand for human rights. And Prince MBS basically reminded Biden about, um, obviously, uh, tortures in Iraq, namely Abu Ghraib prison. Uh, he also reminded him about failures in Afghanistan, failures in Iraq with, with regards to the JCPOA, failure to uh, protect Saudi oil fields from Houthi attacks. Um, he basically gave him a big laundry basket to Biden, um, basically uh, in return, and Biden really didn't know how to handle it. MBS also raised the issue of um, Palestinian American journalist Shirin Abu Akhli, um killed uh, by Israeli forces. And again, Biden and Americans pretty much um, brushed their shoulders, did nothing, not even mention it, not even um, say anything to the Israelis. So it's, there's a lot of double standards going on. So there was obviously a lot of talk um, going on between the Biden admin and the team of MBS. And one of the major talking points is they want Saudis to produce more oil. And he has failed in that regards because Saudis have said that oil decisions are for OPEC plus and not for Biden to decide. So that was a big slap in the face. The second thing that was discussed was um, basically... They said that China will buy Saudi oil with Yuan. And also there's a lot of investment, China investments going in into Saudi. And there's lots of uh, Russian investments going into Saudi as well, as well as the Middle East. So you can see this article here. US won't let China and Russia dominate Middle East, Biden tells Arab leaders. So let me tell you something. US's influence in the Middle East has is all but, but dead, absolutely dead. First of all, let me start with Iran, first of all. So you got Iran, who is um, who has one of the biggest, you know, biggest amount of oil and gas and untapped in the world. And basically, when Biden met up with his Israeli counterparts, they obviously were threatening Iran. Um, he hasn't made friends with um, MBS at all as well. And he, the whole of the Middle East can see what you know Biden's admin has been doing. The way they pulled out of Afghanistan, uh, what they did to Iraq, what they did to Afghanistan, what they are doing to Syria with all those um, airstrikes. US has got no more trust left in the Middle East. And you can see again, he's gone to Palestinian, he met the Palestinian leader. And again, there's no push for peace when it comes to Palestinians. Palestinians literally have no rights as people. Uh, they are being pushed out of their lands. And, uh, and the Americans just sitting by letting it happen. They are just letting by um, genocide happen. And again, this is why the U.S. has got no more trust less left in the Middle East. And this is why they are, Middle East is now, you know, going towards China. And they're also going towards Russia as well. So the fact that Biden says U.S. won't let China and Russia dominate Middle East. So what are they are going to do? Start bombing the rest of the Middle East then? Is that what they're going to do? Because this sounds like a threat to me. Because he's already lost the Middle East. And the Middle East is not going to come back. And you can see with the way the Middle East countries have been dealing with Biden's admin, dealing with the Americans, dealing with the USA in general. You know, they've lost all trust. You know, US, the, the last piece of trust was left was in Afghanistan. And you've seen what they've done there. Um, they're still bombing Syria. They're still stealing Syrian oil. So why would any Middle East country trust America? Because they, all they do is bomb the Middle East. And you can see with the Ukrainian war as well, you know, the Syrian refugees don't matter. Yemeni refugees don't matter. It's all about Ukrainian refugees. You know, as long as you have blue, blue eyes and blonde hair, we'll welcome you. We'll give you lots of aid. But if you're Syrian, if you're Yemeni, you get nothing, absolutely nothing. 
So there's a lot of, you know, obviously kind of racism there uh, and the Middle East see all through that, through that completely. So Saudi Arabia's ties to the US and China are not mutually exclusive, minister says. So the minister of Saudi Arabia says, we build bridges with people. We do not see one as exclusive of the other, Saudi minister said, um, told CNBC. The conversation took place against the backdrop of Biden's much publicized and criticized vi visit to Middle East. Um, the president was on a mission to restore ties. Obviously, he's not going to restore any ties. And strategic ally of some 80 years and a country he has spent excoriating as human rights abuses. So you can see, you know, with all of the fist bump games he was playing and shaking hands with the Israelis, uh, the fact that he went to see Israel first before he went to see MBS, it shows where the priorities lie. US's priorities have always been Israel. They don't really care about the Middle East. And they and the Middle East countries know once the oil runs out, that's it. The US is not going to care about them at all. You know, So they are quite lucky they've still got oil. Um, and if they didn't have any oil, US would just pack up and leave like, like like they've done to Afghanistan and a lot of the Middle East countries know that already all the trust they've had against USA has gone Saudi Arabia had a lot of trust for the United States like Patriot missiles were supposed to protect their oil facilities from the Houthis they got taken away and um, so these oil facilities have got obviously got attacked so Saudis were not very happy about that and the fact that America has also taken some terrorist groups off the list. The Saudis are not happy about that as well. There's a big list of things, and and MBS, he, he, you know, he knows he's he's not happy, and the fact that he's been humiliated by Biden, absolutely humiliated. You know, Biden stood in front of the podium, calling him an, a pariah. He's humiliated him by talking directly to his father and not to him. And now Biden is forced to talk to him because he knows that MBS has all the power now in the kingdom and he's very close to becoming the next king. So Biden is forced to kind of meet him and he's just not going to make any difference really. And MBS as well as all the other Arab leaders know that it's all fake. It's just, it's just for show, it's just for photo op and that's it really. He's going to go back with nothing, empty handed. So they're not going to stop their partnership with China as well. They know China is the future. It's a growing economy. China needs a huge amount of oil. Um, and as you know, China is the factory of the world. So they need a lot of energy. They need a lot of oil. And Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries are happy to sell it to them. So let's move on to Italy. As you know, Mario Draghi has uh, quit as Prime Minister and Italy is now saying that they might be unable to arm Ukraine. And there's also stories in the Telegraph in the UK saying that Schultz could be the next leader to be kicked out. Um, and you can see from um, this article as well. Germany has abandoned decades of balancing both Russia and the US. How long will it survive on its new path? So Germany's um, path has alienated, alienated Russia, is literally destroyed all the bridges it built with Russia all of these years. And it's also destroyed all bridges with the West, with, with the Americans as well. The fact that they are sending weapons late to Ukraine and they're not happy about it and you know basically they, they, they've just been fools um, jumping off the cliff based on Biden's lies and Ursula's lies and Schultz has left himself very very vulnerable because there's a lot of problems in Germany now there's a lot of businesses going bust uh, people are rationing gas um, companies like BMW and Volvo, their share prices are going really down at the moment and they're, they're not even selling that many cars around the world. So major, major companies, um, German companies are being affected uh, all around the block. Um, they are also starting to alienate China. They are talking about Chinese human rights. So this government is purely 
an American puppet. They're basically doing everything that the Americans want them to. And I just don't understand why they had to close Nord Stream 2. Nord Stream 2 is a parallel pipe that goes um, uh, in parallel to Nord Stream 1. And the whole point of Nord Stream 2 is when one pipe is down for maintenance, the other pipe keep go keeps going. And that's the whole point. You know, people think that Nord Stream 2 is a brand new pipe. It's not. It's a parallel pipe to Nord Stream 1. And now they're all complaining about Nord Stream 1 going down and there's not enough gas for, for Europe. There's not enough gas for Germany. You know, these works, these maintenance works, you know, these are normal things. These are normal jobs that happen in a pipeline. And a lot of the parts are needed from Canada, which are not being replaced, which are not being delivered. So it's not all Russia's fault. It's all down to the sanctions and them shutting down Nord Stream 2. I mean, this is the absolute own goal in terms of German foreign policy. I just don't understand what possessed them to do that. Absolutely horrible, horrible decision. You know, it could have been the one decision which which could have made German independent from the United States because at the moment, the United States is contro controlling Germany in every possible way. They've got huge amount of American troops and, ba you know, uh, they control Germans' foreign policy. You know, if they basically played their cards right, and especially with German cheap energy, I mean, Russian cheap energy, you know, Germany could have been independent and um, moved away from the United States and forged its own identity rather than, you know, build, building a wall between Germany and Russia and just destroying its own economy. I mean, I just don't understand why they would do that. So the Telegraph is saying Schultz will be next to go in line. And it's really, really funny. All of these world leaders, they're just dropping like flies one by one. Macron is also not doing well. Um, he, he, he's in real danger as well. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. So this funny story, I found it really hilarious. Um, Boris Johnson takes revenge on Rishi Sunak. So the Times has claimed that outgoing Tory leader has urged fellow Conservatives to back any candidate except one. So guess who the candidate he, he's, uh, he asked his mates not to back? Uh, yes, you got Rishi, Rishi Sunak, Rishi Rishi, Rishi Rishi Rich. Um, Rishi Sunak. So obviously Boris is not a big fan of him, even though he had him as Chancellor, uh, which means that the favourites are still the two ladies. You got Liz Truss, and you have the um, the other lady. I can't remember her name now, uh, but she seems to be quite a favourite. Um, so she could be an underdog. She could come. Um, she could become the next Prime Minister. Who knows? I hope she does. I hope it's not Liz Truss. Seriously, if it's Liz Truss, the whole country will go down the drain. I guarantee it. And um, yeah, so I hope it's not Liz Truss. But, but yeah, um, Rishi, I think he has ruined his chances by being a chancellor. He's He was basically involved in, in destroying this country. So I just don't see how he can improve on it. So I just hope it's not Rishi as well. So we're coming up to the idiot of the day and guess what who the idiot of the day is yes we have tony blair the warmonger the idiot of the day tony blair calls on the west to be united and stand up to china <laughs> can you believe this shit so this guy comes out of nowhere after a war with iraq and you know he's not still not satisfied he wants another war with china now and uh, he's basically um come out of the woodwork he's a billionaire by the way this war he pushed with iraq you know with the with all with the george bush and you know he he must have got paid handsomely by the military industrial complex and now he's got mansions all over the world he's got billions um his name is on the pandora papers as well so this guy is raking it in at the moment and um now he's calling for the west to be united and stand up to china <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so this is why this guy is an idiot of the day i mean this guy needs to be in a um, court uh, in a court martial and he needs to be tried for war crimes for killing millions of iraqis going into this unjust war and war full of lies about weapons of mass destruction so this guy needs to be in prison 
not out, you know, asking for more wars and standing up to this country, standing up to that country. Seriously, this guy. Anyway, that's all I have time for today. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and whatever you can to support the channel. Uh, my Patreon members have gone up lately, so I'm really, really happy. I think I've gone to 62 or 63. So really appreciate all you new members who are joining. Um, I'm also on Locals as well, so don't forget to join that. I really appreciate all the support. It just helps me from, you know, helps me kind of do these videos and also organize a lot of live chats. Now, I had a few live chats already. Um, I'm inviting a few people from Patreon to do more live chats. There's one or two guys. I know you are waiting. Uh, I'll probably schedule it over the next few weeks. Just trying to figure out what time I can have. So, so yeah, uh, don't forget to join. Uh, be very, very good to have you guys on board. And take care and enjoy the nice weather, guys. Take care for now.